Hello everyone and welcome to the Weekend Slice. Uh, since the demo for um, Tesla Effect at Hex Murphy Adventure was a big hit on the channel, I decided maybe, you know, that series idea that I had with let's play a demo once in a while might actually be a pretty good idea. So this week we're playing another one, another demo. This is a demo for a first person shooter game called Alien Rage. You can find the demo on Steam. And uh, the reason why I decided to play this particular game is because I have, let's say, sort of uh, an affinity for the company that made it. Um, right now, you, uh, if you look up the company that made this game, you'll see the name CI uh, Games, or whatever they decided to call themselves these days. Actually, they're the successor to a company that used to go by the name of City Interactive. And City Interactive um, used to be a company that made low budget, uh, cheap to buy, cheap to play, cheap to run, first person shooters. Uh, they didn't pretend to be anything other than they were, which was simplistic games overall that didn't do anything original. They, they were essentially just copycats of much bigger games, but they were also sometimes, some of them, not all of them, some of them were actually pretty fun to play. They had a few series of those games. Uh, I don't actually remember uh, any of those titles in, you know, with a particular fondness, but some of them uh, I do remember because they focused on different elements than Call of Duty or Medal of Honor, for example, where it wasn't just the military that were hogging the spotlight and it wasn't just on those let's stop these m mega terrorists doing this mega whatever thing and the whole world is in danger no they, these guys had sometimes let's say much narrower and much more uh, smaller sized stories in their games and I like that actually they, act they had games with bigger stories but because these guys were never fantastic story writers the games the stories themselves were sort of tongue-in-cheek in a way, and fun, and um, fantastic, in, you know, in the literary sense, meaning that they were a bit over the top, a bit more over the top compared to something like the Call of Duty or Medal of Honor games. And their games so far, the ones that I've played from these guys, from this company, have been fun. Now, uh, a while back they made a game called Sniper Ghost Warrior, which was their biggest success. I took everyone by surprise because it was actually uh, reviewed as being a pretty decent game. Now I haven't played any any part of that game, not even one second, so I don't want to comment on whether it was actually good or not. But the point is, since they had that big success and they had it on, uh, they had that game out on PC and the consoles, and it sold well on all platforms, uh, they decided to not only rebrand themselves but to actually up their game a little bit. So. Uh, essentially, you can still look at them at making games that are in that particular niche of, um, let's say, cheaper games made for smaller budgets that actually just want to uh, feed one of those needs that you might have of playing a particular type of first-person shooter. So if you want to play something like Call of Duty, but you want to play as a sniper, you've got the Sniper Ghost Warrior series. Um, and if you want to play something that's like the old-school Unreal and uh, Quake games, especially Quake 2, Alien Rage seems to be in that um, sort of segment. It's not particularly original uh, in terms of story, in terms of how it plays. I've played a little bit of, of this game just to get a feel for it, and it's not. There's nothing outstanding about it. There's nothing that's going to grab you and make you feel like, wow, these guys know uh, how to make a fantastic game. But at the same time, there's nothing really wrong with it, not from what I've played so far. It is a game that I would uh, so far th actually consider playing all the way through, not just this demo. If I could get it at a really, really low, low price, low price, no, low price in a sale or something. So if you see this game, something like at something like five, ten dollars, uh, and you feel like playing something that reminds you of the old school shooters, your Quake 2s and whatnot, 
I think this is so far, uh, from what I've played of it, a pretty decent, uh, decent, let's say, alternative. But if you actually uh, feel like playing something that's a retro shooter, there's actually the choice of going on GOG.com and buying one of those retro shooters like Unreal, the first Unreal game, or the second Unreal game, or, you know, I don't know, the Duke Nukem 3Ds and your Bloods and your uh, Shadow Warriors, the original, uh, and you could, you know, uh, get that experience by actually playing a retro shooter. If you want to play a modern, let's say, modernized version of a retro shooter, I think you're better off going, and if you don't mind playing full price, uh, or if you can get it on sale, I think you're better off with, uh, with something like the uh, modern version, like the, the remake of Shadow Warrior. Uh, this is somewhere in between. It's it's not modern enough, it's not well made enough, and but it's also not cheap enough at, the, at full price at its full price and I've seen it for $30 uh, sometimes sometimes for 20 sometimes for a bit less than 20 I think that's a bit too much at the moment for it because it doesn't really do anything particularly well uh, it doesn't have bring anything new to the table but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself with this sort of mini review I'm doing at the beginning let's jump into the options uh, Gameplay-wise, I've disabled aim assist. I don't know why it's here. This is a retro-style shooter. This option shouldn't be here. I think they're sort of saying, hey, you might want to play something that uh, is like uh, one of those old-school shooters, but you haven't played old-school shooters. You're not that type of gamer. You just want to see what everyone else is talking about. Here's some aim assist to help you. Nah, it doesn't hurt that it's there I because you can take it out just don't think that anyone that would actually be interested in this would select to have aim assist on. Um, classic, you know, control change opportunities here, options, uh, mouth, uh, mouth, mouth, mouth smoothing for better commentary on your YouTube videos, unlike the one I'm making right now. No, mouse, mouse smoothing. Uh, I've turned this off as well. I don't know why it's there again. I think maybe it's for if you're playing this on a laptop and you have a really shitty, tiny portable mouse. But then again, yeah, this actually does fit that category. I think the best way to describe this, and I've just thought of this, is sort of like a casual first-person shooter that you play when you don't have anything else that you want to play or you want to play something that doesn't require as much involvement from you. Uh, I've I've sort of tweaked the settings in terms of the you know the video settings to allow me to record this well. Uh, well, uh, the game actually runs pretty well with all of these options turned up, but when I'm not recording, and maybe it's something with the recording software not going you know along well with the game. Maybe it's something uh, to the fact that the game doesn't like. Uh, having something else share some video memory or something like that I do have a pretty old video card at this point uh, the GTX 560 non DI the simple 560 which was just a refurbished GTX 460 from Nvidia which is at the moment you can call that an old video card an old chipset it's it's doing its job but it, you know this kind of game which actually does look pretty nice it's running on the Unreal 3 engine it's kind of too too taxing for it, especially when I'm recording. So that's why my video settings might not be that impressive. Uh, when I'm not recording, I can actually pump this all the way up, and it runs pretty smoothly. Audio, a whole bunch of settings here. Uh, well, not a whole bunch, but basic settings that I think are enough. I don't expect a game like this to offer you a lot more. And I don't understand why the credits are in the option screen. But anyway, so player perks, you can unlock some perks. I don't know what these are because I haven't unlocked any of them. I haven't played that much to clear any of them. You can to open any of them and you can clear them all. I don't know how uh, clear all. Oh, uh, clear the ones that I have already selected to use. Yeah, OK, interesting. There's a buy the full game link here in the demo, which makes sense. Let's not complain about that, people, because it actually makes sense. 
So I don't know what infiltration here is, and uh, these are think are uh, these I think are some of the audio logs that you find in the game. We'll get to that when when we play the game. But let's let's go on, let's go ahead and start a new game. Uh, you can choose your difficulty. Challenging is for players new to shooters. Hard is for people who've played shooters before and brutal for the hardcore players. Now to be honest, I don't think hard should be called hard. I think it's more of a marketing blurb here so far. I've seen other people say that later on the game is actually hard, but at the beginning uh, I played sort of, let's say, 30-40 minutes of this. It's not that hard. Not, th not that difficult. I don't know. Maybe it, it, it slowly grows and this ga this demo seems to be actually from the beginning of the game so maybe it grows in difficulty later on and hard actually is harder to play I'm gonna shut up and let the the intro here gonna speak for itself and tell you the story it's not particularly interesting but you'll see what I mean when I say that this is like a modern version of Quake 2 Asteroid Demos 875 for billions of years, this hunk of rock just sat here in the most godforsaken quadrant of the universe. It just sat here cooking up its special blend of Promethium. An energy source so powerful it can fuel an entire planet. Or blow it to hell. Our science pukes back home sent out thousands of probes to search for this crap. And once we found the mother load, shit, everything changed. We arrived first and laid claim to the rock. Now it was our rock, our Prometheum, and business was good. Then the Varus arrived. Sure, they looked different than us, but they wanted the same goddamn thing, and lots of it. At first, it looked like we'd all get along just fine, but then something happened, and things got ugly, real ugly. Those bastards attacked and we got the shit kicked out of us. Sure, we fought back, but it didn't go so well. Now, now the Varus have gone underground, cut off all communication, so that you we is sending us in to bury this place. Because if we can't have it, nobody can. Let the fun begin. probably tell so far the game isn't really that uh, I don't know how to put it it's not even trying to tell an, an interesting story but it is a story that to me sort of resembles the one from Quake 2 quite a bit In Quake 2 the earth and the drug were uh, at war and you went on their planet to do some nasty stuff to them and you fought aliens for the rest of the game this game feels pretty much the same way. You're going on this asteroid, of course, it's not an alien planet, but it might as well be, because it's, you know, I mean, look at it, it doesn't really look like Earth, does it? It looks like sort of a moon base or something. Um, you go in here and you get to fight these aliens. Same kind of story, and I probably assume, uh, and I assume that probably at the end of the game there's going to be a boss, just like in Quake 2. Um, graphically, I think it looks nice. Um, the details and everything, like I said, it, it, it runs on the Unreal 3 engine. Which is a bit strange, because City Interactive uh, did make a big splash in the media by signing with Crytek for the license to use the CryEngine uh, software. Uh, development software, and I don't know why this is on Unreal. Uh, I think it's an older project that they started before they signed with Crytek, and it has some problems here and there and when now that they've managed to get it done it they had had to actually release it on the unreal engine but it, it looks really really nice it 
so far from what I've played it is essentially like a retro style shooter with a few key differences that actually some of them are minuses some of them are you know better than what you could find in an old school shooter mainly because of the advan of the advancement in technology since those days and the other thing that I want to say that there's some gameplay elements here that kind of remind me of Bulletstorm. You can do all sorts of crazy things and the game will pop up things like Oh, you d just did something amazing, like you blew something up or you got a headshot and just like Bulletstorm in a way. It's not up to that level of insanity and craziness and quirkiness and fun, but it, it is functional. Um, so far, you know, I, I, I think it, the game looks great, the story isn't really interesting and it gets even worse if you thought that was generic, that intro, just wait a little bit because it actually does get a bit worse in terms of how, ge how, f in terms of how generic it is. Let's see about getting you in. Main entrance sealed off. Stand by for plan B. Iris, where's my entrance? I missed. Wonderful. A computer that miscalculates. Learn to shoot straight into the bowl, then criticize my targeting. Ladies, can we review the game plan here? We use the element of surprise to sabotage as much of the refinery as we can, and get the hell out before the Vorus even know what hit him. No heroics. Get in, poke around, pull out, no heroics. Sounds like your idea of a perfect date. <laughs> Very funny, Jack. Uh, yeah, let's ignore the macho bullshit. Uh, typical macho first person style bullshit, whatever. Uh, the graphics, I mean, they, they're doing some interesting filters. You I mean, look at this the heat waves from the fire, uh, the lights have that sort of bloom effect to them to make them look, make them look all sci fi and stuff. For a game that's, you know, intended to be cheap, uh, to purchase, chip to run, chip to play. No problem with the graphics so far. I think they look pretty damn, inter damn interesting. The problem that I have is this. I want to climb up there and the game is showing me this giant waypoint marker here. When if you kind of take a look around, there was no other place I could go. This is what's going to happen for the rest of the gameplay. The game is extremely linear. It's not just Quake 2 style linear where, you know, you had a few paths that crossing, crisscrossed around the level, but you ended up in the same place. No, this is 100% linear. Uh, but let's get moving anyway. Uh, see? Climbing is a cutscene. Yeah, I got that figured out. Come on, shut up. The game right now, the game in this very moment is loading up, I think, the next segment and slows down a bit. I think it's, again, an issue with the fact that I'm also recording. Yes, yes, yes. So, I don't get why games do this. Uh, the whole... Have you played the third uh, first-person shooter before? Well, go on and select hard difficulty, and then it just spends the next ten minutes or so telling me how to play a first-person shooter game when you know I chose hard difficulty, meaning I've played one of these before. All right, you mothers, by the power vested in me by UE Command, make an official log. The call to lay down arms has gone unanswered. What a beauty. So you pick up some alien weapons. Yeah, not... Same thing as the human weapon. This is a rifle. It just fires... Balls of color. Uh, this fires bullets and feels a lot better to me because it does feel like a weapon. Now when I'm saying linear, I really mean linear. This you can open. That you can open. Across the, uh, the map here, you can't open this either. The only way you can go is down there. Can you kick these and... These are exploding barrels, by the way, if you haven't figured this out. Can I kick this and do something with it? N absolutely nothing. <laughs> F is melee. It, it's not use. You, you can't do anything with these. The game is really, really linear. 
Uh, exploding barrels. Yep, see, I got a bonus in terms of the score because I blew up those uh, enemies instead of shooting them. Eh. I don't know. What you looking at, dude? Uh, interesting, but it's not as interesting as it is as it was in something like uh, Bullet Watch for Storm. enemy laser sights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, the game is strictly linear, also in the I, the sense that oh, there's a guy over there. <laughs> See, exploding barrels, ammo, bonus points, detonator because I blew something big up. Yeah. Um, I think going for the high score is a retro style gameplay mechanic and I don't mind it, I like it. I don't know what this bonus is. Where are you? Is there anyone else? I have to go down that way. You can. I mean, this is locked. There's nothing over there. You can't open this. Nothing over there. Now it's strictly linear, and I do mean. Uh, wasn't that some ammo? Wasn't this ammo? I thought that was ammo. Anyway, I mean, I really mean linear. Like there's nothing. Just one single direct path. So I think overall, so far, you can get the gist of this game. It's a classic shooter that doesn't do anything spectacular. It's one of those hunt the big score sort of games. It does offer some interesting shooting here and there, but not to the point where it revolutionizes first person shooter gaming. And because it's so linear, it doesn't require much involvement from the player. The story isn't, uh, you know, anything to write home about either. But it is, you know, overall kind of well made and fun to play. And I would put it in the, you know... I want to play a shooter, but... I want one that's like an easy sort of quick fix. Uh, before I start playing something that's a little bit more... Uh, demanding of me as a player, so it is a casual first-person shooter for the hardcore gamer in a way. So it, it's not for the persons who play solitaire, and it's not that casual. But it is for the you know the gamer who just wants something to fill up his free time. You know, on you know he, you're waiting for. Uh, let's think, Bioshock Infinite or something along those lines to download off Steam you want to do something in the meantime you can easily jump in and play this I see it working really well as that sort of proposition I'm willing to bet this hurts me nope no, that's not old school, come on game this is another annoying part this audio log bullshit why does it even bother? This is Dr. Karen Matheson to anyone who may be listening. All of this is just one big terrible mistake and and not not figuratively. I mean Now if you're hearing this, there still may be hope. You must find all the logs I left around the station and bring them back to UE command as proof. They need to understand. And I need my family to know that I did everything I could. I don't know what Dr. Karen Matheson. Yeah, I remember her from the staff roster. Her logs may be the key to making heads or tails out of this shit. Agreed. Need to find more. Yeah, so the game actually uh, doesn't even try to hide the fact that the audio logs you know it's not just a generic story of we made a mistake and us and the aliens can get along which is so cliched and boring but it's also a game mechanic like run around the map and find this and you're gonna be surprised how unchallenging yeah I don't even need to aim how unchallenging finding the second uh, audio log actually is because I thought ah, I know I'm gonna have to explore a little bit no you don't the game is extremely linear. Lot of them just here. 
UE were monitoring space around the rock, and only a couple of freighters arrived since Boris took control. Which begs the question, where's all the muscle coming from? And you think you'd have to, you know, it's just, you have to explore a little bit to find the next audio lock? No, you don't. It's just like, you know, you know, one of those platformer games where the, you have to pick up all the coins. The coins are just right in front of you. It's just don't make sure, just make sure you don't miss them. Uh, also, I, uh, just how generic the game is, the, your main character talks like this because he's manly. I eat my breakfast like a man. That's how I, I eat. You know, I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. And retro style gaming, can I shoot these guys? New nope. glass is unbreakable and that they don't even care that I'm here. Also, because the game is so linear, why the hell do I have this ugly waypoint marker in front of me? Because the game wants you just to keep moving along and Iris play it. Dead end. Stand by, I'm hacking the central grid. No intrusion nerve gas this time, if you please. That was years ago and an honest mistake. So the guy who does the voice of the main character is so lacking in passion. It's like blah 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 blah. Open the door, blah blah blah. Who took a shot at me because that wasn't just that guy. Also, yeah, health is regenerating. There's no health packs from what I've seen. Both barrels. Five explosion kills. Ooh, it's got an announcer. kill. Ooh, that, that's interesting. They have an announcer voice. And I blew up that... What the hell did I do to that guy? I just left his torso floating. Yeah, so they have an announcer voice like in the Unreal games. Real double kill. Unreal and Quake games from old. That's fun. Well, you know, this is one of those games you just play. It's a mindless shooter. You play it because you want to shoot things. No other reason. Uh, in that sense... It's up to you if whether you want to buy this because of the shiny new graphics or actually go on GOG.com and get something like the first Unreal game which it, there were, it was on sale moments, Shit. days ago for two and a half dollars. Meaning? Just blow it. Now you're talking. Bye, Jeppa. Yeah. High on a feeling. Yeah. See? Worker uh, uh, drones. Leave them. Secondary and fire fire kills. They took our jobs. Triple kill. Explosion streak. Both barrels. Both barrels. Yeah, it's with the announcer and the whole exploding stuff up, it's kind of retro fun, but you know, the linearity is something that I think holds it back. A bit more openness would have helped. The closest, let's say, recent comparison uh, that I have to this game uh, is Quake 4. Uh, even that, I think, offers a bit more than what this does. Not that much more, but, you know, if you can't get Quake 4, or unreal cheap on sale. Nah, that's what I call resourceful. Definitely give definitely get this if you feel like playing something old school and retro. Just wait until it's on sale. That's my feeling so far. Other than the graphics, it does nothing that uh, the older games don't do. Uh, yeah, aim down, yeah, who cares. It's pretending to be a modern FPS game. Sorry for the slowdowns. Like I said, it's due to the fact that Coke I'm recording. Detected beyond this door. Look for field distortions due to movement. In English. Shoot me thing that moves. Including the air. Career doesn't really move, but... You think, ooh, cloaked enemies. This is gonna be a challenge. Well... Nope. The game actually gives them their own little cutscene and you kill them with a melee attack that is probably the worst melee attack in any first person game I've ever played because you don't actually get any feedback from when your hits connect 
But maybe this is just in the demo, guys. Maybe all of this negativity that I'm spouting here is just in the demo and not in the, um, the full game. Don't know about that, haven't played the full game. This is glass. It's unbreakable. And it prevents me from going to the interesting looking part of the level. And I have to stick with this boring sci-fi, generic looking, uh, metallic colored part of the level. But you have to admit, I mean, it's not just brown and uh, ugly looking like some of those mo first person shooters that pretend to be realistic. Uh, this actually looks uh, pretty colorful and uh, lively. the alien rifle at all, so I'm gonna replace it. That's fucking lovely. With this, which is an alien shotgun. Yeah, not that original. I don't know what I just picked up. I think it's ammo, but I can't be sure. So, oh, that's cool. Oh, that, that was... Yeah. And I died. So yeah, the game is challenging to a certain degree, meaning that the enemies do damage. So you have to sort of kill them from a distance. Yeah, classic Unreal Engine bug with the textures loading up later on. Uh, can I skip this? No, I can't. Yeah, go away. You just... Uh, this look generic as well. Yeah. Alternate mode of attack. Let's go, 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 go. I want to get out of there. I died again. Ah. Oh, the grenade launcher, of course. So, uh, although the pistol is the second one, it's on keyboard one. It's not on key two. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is annoying. I want to skip this. That wasn't headshots, that was headshot. Haha. <laughs> Nitpicking. Oh, that's. Oh, what the hell was that? No one left alive. Good. Two is my rifle. Yay. This is my rifle. This is my shotgun. Okay. <laughs> Do this. Why? Why is it not firing? What the hell happened? Yeah, me saying that the game isn't actually hard and I'm dying in a row because I... Shut up, dude. Something is missing. Um. Anyway, the pistol's not that bad. What the? This guy's never came all the way over here. Ah, maybe the game has one of those adaptive AIs. I'm not gonna die this time. Uh, it's 
try to use some cover. Both barrels. What the hell are they firing at? Oh, so see there's a... There's a... There's some bars underneath the ammo counter here on the right. And I've got no bars. Probably means I've got no more explosive shots. Aha! That makes sense. Now I understand. So it's got a cover system of sorts. And it's not that bad actually. There's an enemy variety here, so the challenge is actually... Uh, I thought that guy was gonna... Yep. Okay. Shut up. Come on. I'm just gonna forget about headshots because the, the, the weapon has a lot of sway when you're trying to aim and fire recoil, you know, animation and stuff. Um, so I'm liking it. I really am. But like I said, this is what this company does. Uh, used to do. I don't know. I haven't played the Sniper Ghost Story games to see if those are better. But this is what they do. Generic first-person shooters that are actually fun to play and a bit challenging. But they're not um, challenging because of, you know, a fabulously complex or original game design they're actually a bit more challenging uh, because of the fact that they do the artificial difficulty level increase by adding enemies where they're not supposed to be or where you don't expect them to be or have them spawn in or things like that yeah 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 let me just hunt around for some I think that's what those uh, cases you find on the floor are Explosive ammo for the explosive, whatnot, explosive shots, or whatever you want to call them. Damn things as volatile as my axe. Refined orange promethium can output absurd quantities of raw energy, while the blue variant is raw and largely unknown, responds only to high pressure buildup. So does my axe. <laughs> yeah, macho humor. My ex wife is such a badass. That it took a badass like me to be married to her. But she was more badass, so we had to get a divorce. Badass. Ooh! Audio lock. Dude, get, go away. Completely pointless audio lock. That wasn't actually difficult to find. 
but it was easy to miss. I don't know if that makes sense to you. See, now I've got one explosive shot. So it kind of takes some of the shooting mechanics of uh, uh, something like Bullet Storm, I think. Uh, that's the best way to describe them. Take cover behind the explosive barrels, guys. Nice, nice strategy. What the hell? Where did you come from? This solves my problem. I think that's what the guy was meant to be. An indicator to hand down those barrels and shoot them. See, the guys aren't actually that clever, I think, but they do do a lot of damage. Yeah. So, the stupidity of that um, audio log is incredible. It's just, I, I don't get why you'd have that. Unless you're System Shock 2, or, or Doom 3 even, and you have an atmosphere, and you're building your level design to showcase that there were actual people here, or something like that. But this doesn't have an interesting story. And it's, she, at first, she goes, you know, there's a message that you need to find, because it's going to be important to the salvation of mankind, and then I'm lonely up in space, and I, there's no, you know, I want to feel the touch of a... A sexual partner, so you're gonna listen to these messages while I'm frustrated about not having anyone to bone here in space. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're gonna call it uh, for this episode, and I'm gonna see you on the next one, guys. Have a good one.